Hola, this is the Social Distance Reading Series, a project between the Vermont School and Green Mountains Review. My name is Rosa Berani. This is my book, Turn Around Bright Eyes. It came out in late 2019 from Get Fresh Books, and I'm coming to you from Queens, New York. So they've asked us to tell you a little bit about ourselves. Um, I have another book forthcoming in 2021. It won the 2019 Alice James Award and is entitled If This Is the Age We End Discovery. And I'm currently working on and finishing a series of sonnets called The Atomic Sonnets dedicated to the periodic table's 150th birthday. So that's what I've been up to. I'm going to read a few poems um, from my current book, Turn Around Bright Eyes, and I'll start with the poem that opens the book. Matoros tags G-Dragon on the seven, the seven being the seven train, which is my train in Queens. G-Dragon, who is a K-pop idol and a member of the group Big Bang. And Matoros my, is my younger self, um, who used to tag, among other things. Matoros never comes home. She's hungry like a wolf. She's Rosa de Mota and Lacroix, all the girls hail on Queens Boulevard. All the views she's killed in the name of Iman and Yasmin Leban. Mata's quite meta. Mata means kill, rose, a curve from the real meat of it all. She's part my little pony. Into bronies she has loved and loved not by astro pony compatibility chart. She's the queerest part of me. What's left after the club's close and has yet to go home, she never goes when she writes. I always write in bed, just swoop down at three musketeers. Mata's on a mission, which is to say I'm my most queer, my most Mata Rose, when she and I don't need all the girls in the yard, don't need all the girls in the yard, by which I mean the one who's not the one who's blocked text and torn up wishy wills, thicker still. That riddle get you killed kind of woman for whom Mata Rose almost cut off a foot, went to the end of two buck ghosting rails. My man is a little afraid of Mata. He accepts her, though, lets her come and go because I stay, I am always with him. Because Mata just wants every seven train to dissolve into G Dragon sound, wants you to howl. Boom, Mata, Mata, boom, Mata, Mata, wow. G Mata, Dragon, Rose, the most pony of them all. G Mata, seven, Dragon Train, Rose, don't wait up, stop, never left, stop, never comes. Boom, Mata, Mata, boom, Mata, Mata, home. So, a lot of these poems were inspired by a very long and dysfunctional relationship I had with my ex-girlfriend, um, who I dated for a very long time. And I'm going to read two of the poems uh, that are about her in particular. The first one is called, She Calls Once, That is a Lie. When she calls in the morning, I've changed my number, address, identifying features. I've sacrificed my name when she calls in the morning. With news, she's selling my teeth on eBay. The teeth she broke off one by one while I was sleeping, that is a lie. When she calls in the morning, I was awake each time she whittled away my ability to bite. Once on VH1 in a thrash metal rockumentary, that is a lie, I was at the Kentucky Derby when she calls in the morning. She's taken all my hats and next my hair and my scalp is an angry red gash. Once eating toffee by the sea, that is a lie when she calls in the morning. It was a rest stop in Jersey and the assortment was unreal. And of all things, I chose dentine. Once I knew all lemon drops by names and identifying features, they had names when she calls in the morning. She wants the children when she calls in the morning and the house and the hospital where they won't operate on me. There are no spare parts. Not even a space between, whistling like a fist at the bank in wet season, lying through her teeth. I'm okay. So the second poem I'm going to read, uh, I wrote in a period where I thought I was really finished with this relationship of constant cheating and deceit. And to try to refrain from taking her calls, texts, apologies, email. She thinks she sent me flowers that one time. Um, I watched a lot of bad movies. We're talking like Xanadu. We're talking showgirls. We're talking like Lindsay Lohan movies after Mean Girls. Um, and I mean that with love because I really love 
the worst of Lindsay Lohan movies. They're fantastic. Um, and it really helped. So I'm going to read this poem called Mas Dolor. There's a lot of references to those bad movies in this poem. When you leave, you go out a brick house, stripped of copper and sunbirds. At the high table, I stand for the reckoning. I'm ready to sleep. I'm ready to walk out. I need a big band. No, a badly written muse on roller skates, the winning hand of a musical. Oh, evil woman of Xanadu, to hell with your strange magic and mortal time, to hell with Higgs, Boston, and fading stars that guide, the stellar, the loud, the wide, the look at me, the look at me, in the night. Wasted, wasted sister, I want to let it all hang out, the dirty, dirty laundry, the nights our tongue spun like some circus soleil wheel of death. So, send in the pink ladies. No, the Spice Girls, no, drown me in the pool, and darling, I'll undivine the dolphin within every showgirl, cause when you leave I'll destroy your memory with a face smothered in cold cream. No more wire hangers and midnight raids, no basic instinct to scratch my face, so I fall through a glass table. Let's just say when it happens I'll know who killed me. I'm the good twin surviving the strip club when everything goes to seed. I was such a mean girl, so you never had to be. The shame has surfaced, the seance has ended. You are rebescent in the sunrise of old man wishes while I never got off the damn planet. Game over, girl. Game over. I'm already gone. Dismantling the junkyards, knocking the scrapers to their knees. This time I'm going in, my sweet, sweet, all day and all of the night. So, to change gears a little bit, I'm going to read a poem that celebrates a friendship. Uh, a brilliant friend of mine named Daryl Alejandro Holmes, who is also a poet and I hope you'll all read, um, seems to always be in Berlin when I'm in Hong Kong visiting my husband's family. Um, and I wrote this poem because he once said to me we should really meet halfway between Berlin and Hong Kong. And rather than look that up, I did the most sensible thing and created a new world, of course. So this is Odyssea. It's very, very loosely based on the Odyssey. The motorcycle I ride only turns left. When you go west, I have to bear right. Such balance is not my forte. I'd rather bait the wooden escalators at Herald Square until the stiletto sticks I'm left to limp. People think it's cute when I'm playing them. When you're in Berlin dancing in the street. Once I was a child face down in the street, thrown by a motorcycle that only turns left. A child who carries a knife is softened by the kind who often gets away. We're the kind who often get away. In Hong Kong filled with rice wine and in-laws hot pot, I dance on the roof strewn in orchids blue and green. The kind of colors you once said the ancient Greeks couldn't see or didn't have a word for them. Perhaps it's not the blues I hear then from this wine-dark South Sea when my phone tweet-tweets it's you. Hang soon. I'm in Beijing. Let's meet wherever halfway might be. Half my shoes are gone. Got stuck when I was going up the peak posting love to the future. I have left heels all over Hong Kong in the most nonlinear fashion. My bare feet only turn left. My arms and arms of egg tarts, wrapped in leather scarves, wine and gray. Darling, why meet halfway? Let's go to Mars, to cell phone towers in space, and sing Are You Happy With Your Service, Little Miss Purple Rain. In the clouds, let's rain down magic beans upon lotus eaters who never know where they wake. Why tell them anyway? Tomorrow, all the Malamars in space. Tomorrow. All the Malamars in space, I too, have been such foolish things. The one pouring champagne for all the girls circling this world in jet skates that only Kareen left. The night we are, bobs and weaves, this night, face down in the street, both merciless and beneficent, so yes, let's meet in Medias Res, the place no one thinks to name. It's shaped like the great escape of Steve McQueen. Athena too will come. She's going all in for us. In this bike we trust, in these colors we sing, the gods from the machine. So in Hong Kong, um, in my in-laws, 
apartment, which is very tiny, my husband and I actually sleep in a little room on the roof. And one thing that I noticed the very first time we went is that there's all these little wild cockatoos that fly around. And they're very clever, these cockatoos. And I, I love parrots. I grew up with parakeets and, you know, there's um, a bunch of wild Amazons in, uh, in the Rio Grande Valley. So I'm very fond of most birds. But these, these cockatoos in Hong Kong are very, very smart. So I'm going to read this poem that I had a terrible time getting published before it appeared in the book. A journal eventually took it. Um, and it's because of the title. People had a problem with the title. So this is called Shitty Little Dinosaurs. There are birds arising in these flying little dinosaurs. There might be two or three in a single little cannibal who steals the last piece of chicken that we lay out premium seed every night and every morning on the rooftop of my in-laws where my husband and I sleep in a little room in a little bed with its little canopy of red ribbon and mosquito netting. Every night we watch them like beasts awaking in cave paintings without belief in anything but themselves these flying little creeps who seem to know it all, who don't listen to God or natural law without fear, they remain forever, not dying outside a promised land. No, they enter wherever, however, chewing through wood and rag and screen. And when the clouds lay low in the afternoon from the haze come dragons too, who descend to undo clothespins and nails loose. At least five little dragons in each, whose true fire is their speech taken from every one and everything. Muffled laugh track and hawk shrill, quarreling lovers and siren church bells. In August drench until the sky dims, the whole of Hong Kong screams out of them. They taunt and torment, and yet we never hear them coming, and they are none of one place, these shitty little things, who won't leave a single grape to roll lonely on my plate, because once they were cockatoos in shitty little crates crossing the South Sea, this they have not forgotten. Every night they feel the need to escape, to not not arise from our skylines, while I hide my most precious things. As if they will always be with me, as if the day will come they do not return to the rooftop, where I'm not holding my breath, face pressed against torn up mesh. What they are, this earth. Never left, I see the sunrise and sunset within seconds. There are hundreds and hundreds of birds arising within every one of them. So I'm going to close with the very last poem in my book. There's also a story with this title. So shortly after I got engaged to the person that I'm now married to, who is a man, a little, little strange, um, shortly after I got engaged, um, I had a very long talk with my ex and it went south. It was a very dis terrible talk. But then she texted me this sentiment that I thought was beautiful and I was really touched by it and she's a woman of few words so I was very taken by this sentiment. But a year later we're watching the Royal Tenenbaums and of all people Gwyneth Paltrow says these exact words and I was furious. She's a fraud till the end, right? And I told her that. I texted her immediately and I said, you're a fraud till the end. This was not your original words. You took this from a movie and of all people, Gwyneth Paltrow. So she says, why don't you write a poem about it? So I did. This is, I guess we'll have to be secretly in love with each other and leave it at that. Thank you so much to Green Mountains Review, the Vermont School, and everyone for listening. To can't do, to overly over you, to te amo wrong name, to songs of wronged I think we, and planting boxwood and snowdrop for not our winter children, nor sweet box or winter berry, to facetiming winter silence for hours, to Camilla's and Christmas rose touching through a screen and still not sorry about some horse I knew in Iceland for less than a week, and some other life lurking on black sand shores to my life, to yours, to sulking under half-sunken moons and oh, the places we won't go, to not airbnb being haciendas of airy rooms, and canopy beds engraved with lions rose-tailed and rose-maned, 
to drug restaurants that serve only cobra lilies with a side of blackbirds who wields by tamers, a kind of punishment for that horse I still long for, to splinters and spitting the names I'll never curse you, in kitchen inferno when burning certain animals without remorse, to your most exquisite stews and fermented cabbage jars I won't break rushing to catch a broken down train, to the first trail we missed, to falling off an eroded hoof print, to the city you saved by sticking a scorched trainer and sliding door and what's so wrong with hell anyway, to happiness as a betrayal of what is happening to people we love and to people not just waiting around to die. To love is resistance, but not always the way back. To I can't, can't I? To you crashing into the bathroom and fishing me out of the sink and carrying me in your arms like that scene in The Bodyguard. Only the song I sing has no queen, has no eyes or dreams. There is only dim and dog-eared cottage. To forgiving me for all the plums I'd most certainly devour. To the platypus and Fisher King. To breaking in case of emergency. To reading Adonis in a crowded bar while television signal flare amid a canopy of crows. To having hope in our pop-up wit of the world, its edges sour and peeling. To never really having left Jerusalem, which is why I'm still busted stars and throwing elbows. To the hours we made horses between nightfall and war. To should go home. To leaving it the longest ride. A derailed horse cry and amorithine bones. So thank you so much. Um, if you enjoyed these poems, you might also enjoy Deborah Paredes' uh, Year of the Dog. Um, this just came out from Boa. I'm a little tired, sorry. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me. Please check out my Q&A over at Green Mountains Review, and I just want everybody to be safe and healthy right now, and it's really tough out here in Queens, and um, I feel a lot better having read these poems, even though I can't see those that I'm reading to. You're in the future, so that's something to look forward to. Thank you so much. Thank you.